Climbers attempting to summit Mount Everest and stand on the top of the world have their work cut out for them. Dangers are everywhere on the long climb. There's a risk of extreme altitude sickness, unpredictable winds, and freezing weather. There's also the threat of avalanches, great unstoppable tidal waves of snow that can bury a person alive in seconds or strand them, leaving them to freeze to death cold and alone. It's a sad reality that not everyone that visits Everest comes back down again, and rarely does a climbing season go by that the mountain doesn't claim yet another victim. Situated on the border between China and Nepal, in a sub-range of the Himalayas of Tibet, Everest is one of the seven wonders of the natural world. With an elevation of 29,031 feet, or 8,848 meters, Mount Everest has attracted many experienced mountain climbers over the decades. But even for the most experienced mountaineers, the ascension up its snowy slopes is far from easy. Deaths occurring on Mount Everest are nothing new, and hundreds of people are believed to have died attempting to ascend the treacherous peak. Sadly, due to the risks involved with carrying heavy loads down off the mountain, many of those who die on Everest are doomed to stay there forever, their frozen bodies serving up as their own grave markers. It's difficult enough to move your own body up and down Everest, and in many situations, bringing a body back down is simply impossible. The bodies of these lost souls are scattered all across and sometimes underneath the surface of Mount Everest. But some of those bodies are different from the others, and have a special name within the files of the SCP Foundation. They call them SCP-5140. SCP-5140 is the designation given to a number of frozen bodies which are found all across Everest. It is unclear exactly how many instances of SCP-5140 there are, though some estimates have placed the number at somewhere between 1 and 200. At present, it is unknown if all the instances of SCP-5140 are dead bodies belonging to climbers who met tragedy on the tallest mountain in the world, or if some of them are something else entirely. But while their origin is unclear, if you come into contact with a 5140 instance, there won't be any doubt that it's different from the normal body of a dead climber. That's because SCP-5140 corpses are a lot like vampires in some ways. That isn't to say that they actually are vampires. They certainly are not undead and cannot function after death. But much like a vampire traditionally drains blood to survive, these bodies drain heat. SCP-5140 corpses are ectoentropic, meaning they do not adhere to the normal laws of thermodynamics. Whenever these cadavers are exposed to sources of heat, including human body heat, the corpse will instantly drain the source of any and all thermal energy. However, the temperature of these SCP-5140 bodies remains the same, regardless of how much heat they are able to drain, staying at a constant 50 degrees Fahrenheit, or 10 degrees Celsius. Should any living person come into direct contact with one of the SCP-5140 corpses, the body will absorb their natural body heat, bringing their victim's own temperature down to 10 degrees Celsius and causing them to die. And once they have died, their body then becomes a new instance of SCP-5140. As a quick side note, this might feel vaguely reminiscent of another anomaly, which features seemingly inert dead bodies that are hazardous to anyone around them. SCP-2316 This anomaly is a powerful mimetic hazard consisting of a large number of drowned human corpses. These corpses are extremely hazardous to approach at even a considerable distance, as the mimetic hazard inherent to the anomaly causes those affected to recognize the bodies in the water as people they know, particularly from their childhood. Like a siren's call, the victims are lured into the water, believing that the familiar bodies are calling to them. If the victims aren't stopped, quarantined, and given amnestic treatment, they are essentially considered lost. They will walk into the water and be absorbed into the collective, becoming just another body floating in the water. While the Foundation doesn't currently believe that there is any official connection between the two anomalies, the similarities are undeniable and worth taking into consideration. Moving on. At present, it is unclear whether SCP-5140 corpses are caused by some sort of infection or parasite that spreads among the bodies uncovered at Mount Everest. If this is the case, the Foundation has yet to uncover the Patient Zero, the root cause of these infected bodies. There is also little to determine why a deceased body requires the absorption of heat, 
as well as how it achieves this and also keeps its own temperature low but not frozen. Given that interacting with an instance of SCP-5140 can be fatal, it does seem that these anomalous properties can be passed through contact and exposure, like a disease or a parasite. But there have been no observed anomalous effects among any living person visiting Mount Everest. There is a possibility that the SCP-5140 corpses have developed some form of posthumous mutation that has come as a result of being killed during an Everest avalanche and buried in the snow, their bodies starved of heat after death. After all, Everest is known for its cold temperatures, occasionally reaching as low as 1 degree Fahrenheit or minus 17 degrees Celsius. Not to mention the difference in air pressure at such high altitudes, as well as frequent high-speed freezing cold winds. At the summit of Mount Everest, wind speeds can reach up to 280 kilometers per hour. That is equivalent to 175 miles per hour. And high-speed winds have even been known to catch mountain climbers off guard and send them plummeting to their deaths. Perhaps the combination of these conditions, the freezing temperature, the air pressure, and the winds have triggered some sort of change in a number of the bodies unfortunate enough to never leave the snow-covered slopes of Mount Everest. Either that, or these abandoned corpses left in such extreme cold could be the perfect home. Maybe some form of unknown and so far undetected parasite is capable of inhabiting these frozen bodies, and can spread to other living hosts by draining them of their body heat. Stranger things have certainly happened at the SCP Foundation, and that could possibly explain why anyone interacting with an SCP-5140 corpse meets the same grisly fate. Regardless of what causes these abnormalities, or why the SCP-5140 bodies have only been uncovered at Mount Everest, close contact with the corpses often result in casualties and fatalities. Naturally, this is a cost the SCP Foundation likes to avoid as often as it can. The nasty habit SCP-5140 corpses have of draining a person's body heat makes it impractical to bring them back to a Foundation research facility for testing, as does the fact that they're on the tallest mountain in the world. Instead, MTF Delta-14 have been tasked with keeping these heat-thirsty cadavers contained to Mount Everest. Mobile Task Force Delta-14, also known under the codename Winter Wonderland, is formed of a group of particularly adept mountaineers, and experts in understanding and adapting to particularly brutal terrain without drawing attention to themselves. These covert operatives are tasked with periodically climbing Mount Everest and keeping SCP-5140 contained. It is this team's job to locate any new instance of SCP-5140 bodies and bury them in the snow. In doing so, the goal is to prevent any unwitting mountain climbers from stumbling upon one of these bodies and potentially becoming a new instance themselves. Meanwhile, the Foundation is pushing for both Nepal and Tibet to tighten restrictions on climbing permits. But of course, the money that Mount Everest tourism brings to these two countries has likely impeded this. According to the Foundation's file on SCP-5140, an incident occurred during one of Mobile Task Force Delta-14's annual Everest expeditions. Members of MTF Delta-14 had been traversing towards the Everest summit, encountering more and more of the SCP-5140 bodies as they made their way up the mountain. Just as they were instructed to do so, the team buried each of the frozen corpses they came across under a blanket of snow. The Delta-14s noticed, though, that there had been a much higher number of the frosty cadavers on this mission, speculating that perhaps Mount Everest's high winds had blown the snow off of ones they had already buried on previous missions. One of the Delta-14s, a man named Charlie Smith, was in correspondence with his colleagues at their base camp. Charlie reported that one of his fellow Winter Wonderlanders, Patrick, had touched one of the SCP-5140 corpses when the team reached the summit, and that he was now buried according to protocols after becoming an SCP-5140 instance himself. As they began their descent from atop Everest, Charlie sent an urgent communication to base camp, reporting that he'd uncovered three more SCP-5140 bodies at an abandoned campsite. Except these three instances were different from any he had encountered before. These corpses were somehow still moving. Attempting to hurry down the mountain, Charlie reported that a mass of SCP-5140 corpses were blocking his path, and draining another one of his squad mates, Arnold, of his body heat to make him one of them. Arnold had been carrying the team's provisions, including their oxygen reserves to combat the lack of breathable air at Mount Everest's high altitude. Charlie tried in vain to use his flare gun to clear the path, hoping to distract the now walking cadavers with a heat source, but it had no effect. 
His final message to base camp warned the rest of Delta 14 to not come to the summit of Everest, with Charlie frantically urging them to not let climbers anywhere near it. His final message simply stated that the mountain is danger. A rescue division of Mobile Task Force Delta 14 arrived just under two hours later, tracking Charlie's last known location via a GPS beacon. Strangely, despite the frantic messages from Charlie, there were no signs of any SCP-5140 instances. None of the piles of corpses he had warned them about could be seen above the snow, and certainly none of them were moving. It wasn't long before the rescue team found Charlie, though. He was dead, but not drained of heat or turned into another instance of SCP-5140. No, sadly, after bringing their fallen comrade back to base, an autopsy revealed that Charlie had died likely the same way so many other climbers on Everest had. He had suffered from a lack of oxygen. Further examination of his gear revealed that Charlie's oxygen intake valve had been damaged earlier while the squad had been climbing to the summit of Mount Everest. His teammates Arnold Hillary and Patrick Edmund were also discovered on the mountain, but only Patrick had been turned into an SCP-5140 instance. Arnold had simply died from exposure, just like Charlie. The rescue team concluded that due to lack of adequate oxygen, Charlie Smith had hallucinated the sight of SCP-5140 corpses moving and blocking his path, spending his final moments in terror as the mountain's conditions slowly killed him. The Foundation is still unsure exactly what causes bodies to become instances of SCP-5140, or even how many of them are on Everest, but a major and troubling development has recently been made. After an increase in global temperature led to a large avalanche that resulted in a large portion of the mountain that had previously been covered in thick snow being exposed, the Foundation sent planes that were equipped with thermal imaging equipment to scan the mountain. What they found was as confusing as it was terrifying. The SCP-5140 corpses aren't just spread across the surface of Mount Everest. They are much of Everest. The mountain itself is just a huge pile of corpses, just waiting to drain the life from anyone who attempts to scale it and turn them into a permanent part of the peak. So if you were planning a trip to the Himalayas, hoping to scratch climb Mount Everest off your bucket list, maybe give it a pass. Otherwise, you might find that the climb is even colder than you were expecting. Now check out SCP-1861, the crew of the HMS Wintersheimer, and SCP-3082 Neverland's Lost Boys and Girls for more mind-boggling mysteries from the SCP Foundation.